how to reuse, repurpose, or recycle a lesson. Hello, it's Malcolm Cox here, and thanks for joining me today on Tuesday Teaching Tips, episode 126. Now, you know the feeling you've worked hard on your lesson, you've got your notes ready, you've um, got the right applications, the illustrations, you've studied hard, you've delivered the lesson, and then you're basically throwing it away. Then you're called to preach or speak at another place, and you think, mm, maybe I should use or could use that lesson again might be appropriate how do we assess that because there are different views i've heard people say you should always bring something brand new and fresh to every occasion when you preach and teach and others who say no that's okay as long as you process it properly before you reuse material what's the right way to do this if it's okay to do it at all well first of all i'd say i think it's fine to do it in principle let's face it if you've got some shakespeare plays um if it's performed more than once is that a problem certainly not you got someone uh, singing a song out of their songbook. Is it okay for them to sing it more than once? A crowd would demand that they sing their hits more than once. It's not about reusing material, it's about the context and the way and the thinking behind uh, what we do and why we do it exactly. Let's face it, the book of Acts has Paul's conversion in there at least three times. Paul himself talks about it more than once. So just talking, re-talking over old material is not the issue. I think it's how we do it. And I do this now and again. Occasionally, I preach the same sermon twice on the same day. Not often. I try to avoid that. But maybe twice a year, three times a year, that has happened when I preach in the morning for the Watford Church of Christ and the afternoon for the Thames Valley Churches of Christ. And sometimes the passage of time is more significant between two, a repetition of a lesson. It might be a week or a month or a year. Sometimes it's several years. But I think, nah, this could be useful. Anyway, the, the process let's talk about now. Uh, I would say that there are two stages to this process. And then I have three tips for you under each stage. So the first stage is reflection, reflecting on the material and on the occasion. And second uh, stage is rewriting. So reflection, then rewriting. So let's talk about reflection first. So you've got your lesson, you've got your notes, you look back at it and you look at it. And the first question you ask yourself of three questions under reflection is, Will this meet the needs of this next group? Hopefully it met the needs of the first group. Now you're taking this to a second group. Will it meet that group's needs? Are they compatible with the passage you're preaching on, the points you're, you're, you're making? Will it actually meet their needs? Rather than just repeating some truth from the Bible, and of course there's always some value in that, but if you've been given the privilege of preaching to that group at this point in their collective lives, we need to try and do our best to find something that is clearly going to meet the needs. So first reflection point is, is it going to meet the needs? The second question to ask of your lesson is, do you still believe it? And you may say, well, of course I believe it. It's in the Bible. I'm a preacher and I'm a teacher. And I understand that. What I mean is this, that in the preparation of any lesson, one of the things that preparing a Bible lesson does for you and I is it helps us to think about whether we really believe in what we're about to preach and teach. And hopefully part of the process, and this is why we should never prepare a lesson on Saturday night or Sunday morning, is that we've had time to reflect on this passage and on its meaning for our own lives and make adjustments in our own lives before we preach and take it to other people. And that way, we're not trying to say, I figured it out, you need to figure it out. It's more, it's had an effect on me. I hope it will have an effect on you. And there's an authenticity that comes with this uh, living out of the message. And so if it's been a, a little bit, if you're preaching the same lesson twice in one day and there's only a few hours in between, hopefully you still believe it. But let's say you preached a lesson two years ago and now you're thinking about using it again. Are you still living it? Do you still believe it? That's an important question. So that's the second question under reflection. The third question is simply to ask yourself, what would make it better? You look back on the lesson last time, some practical things, some theological things, some methods of pre presentation, what would make it better? If you don't remember it well, you might want to look back at the video or the, listen to the audio. Or if you don't have that available, at least get your notes out and go through it and think, think about how you presented it and how it came across last time. And ask God to give you insight, but ask the question, what would make it better? So three questions under reflection. Question number one, Will it meet the genuine needs of this next group? Uh, question number two, do you still believe it? Are you still living it? Question number three, what would make it better? So 
Now, we've done the reflection um, stage, now we're going on to the rewriting stage. Now, if you're preaching the same lesson twice in one day, you may not have much time for rewriting, but even there, you may have time just to sit down for a few minutes and scribble a few notes, a few changes uh, from the morning to the afternoon version of the lesson, or if it's an electronic, ver um, uh, you're using an iPad or something, you can make some notes in there. But if, if there is a longer gap, it'll be even easier to do this, to do some rewriting. Three things to think about with rewriting. Firstly, in particular, although you're going to look at the whole lesson, in particular, look in more detail at the introduction. Those first few words, those first few sentences, that first paragraph, the introduction is so important. And since you're now speaking not to that first group, but to the second group, they, they have some different needs, they've got a different context, and therefore you may want to introduce what you're about to say in a different way. So that I would say if you don't have much time, in particular focus on rewriting and thinking through the introduction. That's the first thing to do. The second thing to do is to check the relevance of the illustrations and applications. The illustrations and applications were tailored to your first group. They may not apply in the same way to the second group. As an example, the Watford Church of Christ that I preached to in the morning is mostly young families with children still, still living at home. If I'm preaching somewhere else in the afternoon, they may not have that same uh, makeup in their congregation. And so some of the applications and illustrations that would make sense to working people with young children might not apply in, a, in other situations. So check the relevance of your illustrations and your applications. So firstly, check the introduction. Secondly, check the relevance. And thirdly, uh, do check your slides. If you're using audiovisual, do check those slides because some of those pictures you've got in your first presentation might not make sense to the second one. Sometimes in the first one, you might have pictures of people that they know, and that's why it's, it's powerful. Those people that may not be known to the second group, and that would be more of a mystifying effect to them and actually a distraction. Or it may be that you've got some names and dates and things on the first presentation that now are not relevant. Time's moved on, time has changed, dates could be wrong. Just check your slides to make sure that they, um, your second group are going to be able to understand what you're getting at and won't find it distracting. Two sections, two stages to go through when you are revising, recycling, repurposing a lesson. Firstly, reflection stage. Will it meet the needs? Do you still believe it? And what would make it better? Second stage, rewriting. Look particularly at the introduction, check the illustrations and applications, and make sure your slides, if you have any, uh, are relevant. So those are some thoughts for us today. I wonder what you think about this. I'd love to know. When you are contemplating using a lesson for a second time in a different context, what process do you go through to make sure that it's useful and effective in assessing all that? I'd love to know. So leave a comment wherever you see this recording, leave it publicly so that we can learn from each other because we learn best when we learn in community. And if you know someone who would benefit, please pass the link on to them. Uh, leave a comment, um, pass it on, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a review. If you listen to the podcast in, in iTunes, um, you can go to my blog for more information. If you'd like some coaching and spiritual disciplines, do contact me uh, as I offer coaching in that. Look me up on coach.me. You should find me there under Malcolm Cox or MCCX. And until the next time, I hope you have a terrific Tuesday and a wonderful week. Take care and God bless.